Slavery in America began when the first African slaves were brought to the Virginia colony in 1619. African slaves were brought to America to help build and work lucrative crops such as tobacco, rice, and indigo, primarily in the southern American colonies. African slaves were considered a much cheaper and more bountiful labor source than the indentured servants. Slaves were considered as property to the one who owned them. They were movable property, meaning they could be sold or traded. Once they arrived, slaves were sold at a slave auction to the highest bidder. The younger, stronger, and the healthiest were typically sold first. Oftentimes, it was here that families were split up because the person bidding on them didn't want to buy the entire family. Once purchased, the slaves were taken to the property where they would work and live. Slaves were forced to live in barns or in very modest slave quarters. Although the slave owners were very dependent on the slaves to work their crops, they restricted their lives in order to make them completely dependent on them. Slaves were prohibited to learn to read and write, and their behaviors and movements were restricted and closely monitored. The treatment of slaves ranged from mild to cruel. The slave owners would punish the slaves for various reasons. Many times the punishment was violent. Punishment by whipping with a leather strap was not uncommon. Because of the intense labor requirements and punishments, slaves would often rebel by faking an illness, organizing slowdowns, sabotage equipment, or running away. To escape from the harsh way of life and punishment, many slaves formed a plan to run away to a free state where slavery was prohibited. Runaway slaves were often caught by their masters, brought back to the slave state, and punished severely. Sometimes they were even killed. Because of this, the Underground Railroad was built. Now the Underground Railroad was neither a railroad nor underground. Underground referred to how the process had to be kept in secret, in darkness, and in disguise. The word railroad was used because railway terms were used by those involved in the system to explain how it worked. Slaves would move during the night time hours and hide in safe homes or businesses of those who were involved in the abolitionist movement. These places were referred to as stations or depots and were run by station masters. A conductor was one who assisted in, the, in runaway slaves on their journey. The book, January Sparrow, written by Patricia Polacco, is set during the time of slavery and the Underground Railroad. The story is about the Crosswhite family and their journey to freedom. The story is written from Sadie Crosswhite's point of view. It begins on a Kentucky plantation with the merciless beating of Sadie's foster brother, January, for trying to escape. Led to believe that January had died from his wounds, Sadie holds the wooden sparrow January carved for her and cried herself to sleep. That same night, fearing for their safety, the Crosswhites set out to escape using the Underground Railroad. They took only what they could carry. Just moments after crossing the plantation property, Sadie realized she had left her sparrow on the windowsill, but it was too dangerous for them to turn back to get it. They walked on through the woods until they came to the Ohio River. There. A small rowboat was waiting for them. They traveled by foot through the night and would sleep during the day in barns or in safe houses. They were bound for Canada. After many nights of tracking through the cornfields, climbing up bluffs, and rolling through the muck and the mud, they stopped in Marshall, Michigan. Slavery was illegal in Marshall. Even though they were in a free state, the Crosswhites feared for their safety. However, the people of Marshall convinced them it was safe. They stayed with the station master until they were able to move into their very own house. The Crosswhites loved living in Marshall until one day a package was left on their porch for Sadie. As Sadie unwrapped the package, everyone gasped. It was Sadie's beloved sparrow with a note attached that said, I found you. 
Who left this note? Will the cross whites be forced back to Kentucky and into slavery? Or will they remain free? Read January Sparrow to find out what happens to the cross white family.